Well, with Pete Bursich on his way back from Seattle, we've asked former NFL star, Super Bowl winner with Indianapolis, ex for tight end, recording star, soon to be <laughs> acting star. Just stop me any time here, Ben. Jeez, and a very tall, that. very tall guy. I had to find it in there stand next to me, Ben Utek. Ben, thanks so much for stopping Mark, by. Mark, thank you. Appreciate it. Listen, uh, is reality setting in? After a three and thirteen season we saw with the Minnesota Vikings last year, what we've seen from the Vikings these past three weeks in particular, yeah. Is it more that that 4-1 and one start was kind of a mirage? Or where was this thing going to kind of play out here? I don't think it was a mirage. Obviously, we were excited. 4-1, and one, how could you not be? And we've really put a lot of uh, expectation on this team in the last three or four weeks have seen really not a whole lot of results at all. Mm-hmm. So I can understand why people feel that way. But I can tell you one thing. I played with the Indianapolis Colts when we were 13-0, and we, we lost out. We didn't, go to the, we didn't go to the playoffs, didn't go to the Super Bowl. So, you know, I, want to, I still think we need to rally behind this team. But another time you did play at the Colts, you did and go to the Super Bowl, and you're wearing that <laughs> ring on your finger yeah. to prove it, and you were playing with a guy named uh, Peyton Manning. Yes, I was. So you, you know a lot about quarterbacks. You're right. looking at Christian Ponder beyond his stats. They've been rather paltry of late. Yes. It's his body language on the field. He looks befuddled. He looks unsure of himself most of the time, Ben. I don't know if you picked up on that as a former NFL player yourself. I don't know what's going on out there, but it's not good. No, it's not. And I, and I, and I really have. You know, you, you mentioned the three rookie quarterbacks that have beaten the Vikings. Yeah. Not only the Vikings, but... Christian Ponder. I mean, Mm -hmm. here we have a rookie quarterback today playing like he's a seasoned veteran. I mean, composed. He's getting rushed in the pocket, and he's making his his reads and his throws uh, under pressure. And we didn't see that out of Christian Ponder. And that's, I think, why people are really questioning whether or not he's... uh, the guy for the job. And how fixable it is. How we fixable hear the same is. sound bites over and over, over again. We've got to go back and look at what we Well, they've had 10 days to do that. We didn't see <laughs> anything happen today. So, I mean, that's, I that's the it. time you needed to do that, not after today. Well, I can give you a perspective from an athlete's position. And, and sometimes that 10, day off, 10 days off can hurt you because you get out of the, out of the routine. So mm. much of playing well is being in a routine. And sometimes that can hurt you. It's not an excuse. They really should have came out with that much preparation and been able to produce. Well, the game could not have gotten off to a much better start than it did for the Minnesota Vikings. You just said, Ben, look, I mean, if you missed the beginning of the game, uh, Adrian Peterson, 74-yard run, 182 yards. He's setting the bar rather high for guys going off ACL surgery. Unbelievable. I mean, look at this. I haven't seen a cut that big since Mitt Romney's tax proposal. Wow. I mean, it's that big. (laughs) That that political statement paid for by Ben Utek. Peterson follows up with a touchdown, 7-0 right off the bat, silencing at least temporarily that amazing Seattle crowd. He really did. I mean, look at the power of this. I mean, at this league, with how strong uh, these defensive linemen are, to, to push the pile three yards is incredible. Third and seven, though, Percy Harvin is a running back, has the ball stripped from him, and Seattle recovers here. You know what Tony Dungy always said this, turnovers will kill you. They scored on both of our turnovers. At the end of the game, yep. what team has the most turnovers is going to win. And here's an example. You talk about Russell Wilson quickly taking advantage. Touchdown pass, Golden Tate. Absolutely. You've got a crossing pattern. There was a pick set up perfectly. Golden Tate took advantage of it, and it put him in a great position to make a catch. Here's a rare ponder pass towards a wide receiver behind Devin and Aroma should do. You didn't see that much of this at all today. Yeah, you know what? And, and the, the tough thing about this is he was open. Yeah. And if we complete the pass, we've got a first down. Well, Seattle completed two passes on this play. Sidney <laughs> Rice to Zach Miller for 25 yards. Yeah, Rice had a great arm here. Oh, don't we miss Sidney? Oh, I boy. Mean, it's a healthy Sidney. A yeah. healthy Sidney. And, and he, he made a great play here. It's tough on a defense when you do a play-action pass like that. We saw Russell Wilson with Wisconsin last year. Really composed, as you mentioned. Here's a perfect yes. example. He, he looked like this in, in, in college. It doesn't surprise me at all. He comes right out of the pocket, not phased at all by the pressure, puts it right on the money. In the second quarter, Ponder actually underthrows a long pass to Harvin, but he got the benefit of a pass interference out of it. You know what, and, and thank goodness we have uh, the referee right there to make a good call, but if he just puts the ball I know. in the right place... It's a uh, touchdown. Which, yes, it's a touchdown. Well, they did score here. Peterson scores, make it 14-all uh, here. Not a surprise. I mean, <laughs> you know what, give it to the Hulk. Did you see his uh, Halloween picture when he, he literally did. looked like the Hulk? I I'm, mean, keep giving him the ball because we're going to put points on the board. Yeah, he didn't run much in the second half. Third and seven from the Seattle 12, a big play. Potter sacked here, and this, was, this took him out of any chance for a, for a touchdown here. I mean, Mark, four sacks in this game. And, you know, every one of them under three seconds. I mean, you can't expect a quarterback to make plays like that. And then, like I said, 12 play, 80 yards. Right. Biggest series of the game, I thought. Wilson to Golden Tate, who does the little leap here. <laughs> Always very dangerous to do that, but he, yep. it works out for him. I thought for a second there we might have the recovery. Yeah, you know, the, the, they blocked the PAT. It was 2017 Seahawks at the half. Actually, the Vikings misfired on that late first half drive after this touchdown. Again, demonstrating I think, how inefficient this offense is. They have no vertical game to get them in field goal range. As we all know, Blair Walsh has quite the range, but it was all these little lateral passes that really weren't moving the ball forward at all. It, really, they, they weren't. And, geez, 
230 plus yards rushing. Even Coach Frazier said this after the game, you'd think when you have that much rushing that you're going to spread out the passing attack, right. but we just couldn't find the targets. You know, it, it still was anyone's game. You're down by three, but I kept thinking, as I have in all the road games, remember they didn't score a, an offensive touchdown right. in that Detroit win. Right. How is this offense going to score unless it's Adrian Peterson or Harbin doing something spectacular? You don't even think about them moving the ball downfield the passing game. And you really, it, that's, what, that's what's sad because you cannot depend on the running game to win in, in, a, in a passing league. Yeah. You've got to have the threats down the field, and, and they, really, they really better figure it out this week. Really, the Viking offense did very little to make it interesting in the second half other than Percy Harbin trying to play through an assortment of painful leg injuries. There wasn't much happening for them. They decided to stick with Ponder, third and 70, sacked on a blitz, fourth one of the day, we had no chance on this one. Just really didn't have any chance, and, and you know, this is where you have to understand the, the, the struggles for Christian Ponder. It's not all on his shoulders. He needs to make better decisions, better throws, but, but heck, our offensive line has to protect him. Third and five for Seattle, Wilson gets the pass away, boom, Antoine Winfield, <laughs> they got the first down. I'm glad I, I was not a tight end and had to face a yeah, hit from had, him. You had enough of those. <laughs> right. Marshawn Lynch was plenty good for Seattle. 26 carries, 124 yards. That's why they call him the beast. You know what? And all day was the beast mode. It was the competition between Peterson and Lynch. And you know what? I'm thankful to say Adrian Peterson takes the win. He got that win, but Seattle got the big win on yeah. the scoreboard. His three-yard touchdown made it 27-17. He's just awfully good. The Seattle team is awfully good at home. Well, he's just got so much power, and he can just run through guys. And with, with a guy that's that strong, it's, it's hard to bring down. Have you ever seen an athlete like Percy Harvin? He dishes it out, he takes quite a beating. His hamstring, his ankle, his knee, nothing knocks him out. And he keeps going. I mean, look at this. You can tell that he's in incredible pain here. And, and, and having injuries myself, I know how hard it is to get up and to come back into the game, which he did. I yeah. think it shows his courage, it shows his strength. And, and really his conviction to, to be a leader for this team. The refs missed a play clock hitting zero. Blair Walsh made a 55-yard field goal, so they're very much in the game. It's only 27-20. Look, and they have a chance. Yeah. But this is where the good teams find a way in the fourth quarter after the Vikings went out quickly. 23-yarder here to Lynch. Well, and these screens will, will kill you if you're not, if you're not playing them. And, and, and they, they did it at the right time, and it really hurt our defense. Yeah, and then Ponder, they, they set up a field goal, make a 30-20. Ponder tried to finally go deep, but it really wasn't even close. He had the time here. It's just too late. I mean, it, the offense right now is so easy for teams to figure out that, it, that it's just really creating a lot of problems for us in the passing game, and we need to fix it. Yeah, last one was intercepted. He passed for a total of 63 yards and 11 of 22. Adrian Peterson, from at least a number standpoint, was the leading Viking receiver. <laughs> Three catches yeah. for 11 yards. The sentiment in the Viking locker room was that of being rather upset after back-to-back -back losses. <laughs> I mean, frustrating is a, an understatement. Uh, it's, it's annoying. It's, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's, just, it's embarrassing, honestly. I mean, to, to, to have the capability to play one way and then, you know, to get smoked at your own house and then come back out and get smoked again on the road. I mean, guys' mindset's got to change from top, top to bottom, from coaches down to the, down to you know quality control. I mean, guys, I mean, it's it's time to get this thing rolling and get back to what we were doing well. You know, we've had the same issue for you know the, the entirety of our negative part of our season. I mean, when we're playing well, it's a strength, and we're not. That's not a strength. It's, it's it becomes a weakness, and you know, only we can fix that. It's not one guy in particular. It's just 11 guys working together. You know, that's just the way it is. We gotta have more big plays. You know, uh, there's one I wish I could have back uh, slipped in the back in the backfield. That yeah, one definitely could have went the distance. Um, you know, so that's something I think about. You know, with this loss, and you know, we had other opportunities too in the past game uh, that we weren't able to execute. You know, so um, you know, when you're playing a good defense, you know, especially away, you know, you gotta be able to make those big plays. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if there's concern. I mean, obviously, we know that we have to get better. Um, it's all fixable, uh, and then we're going to see that on film probably is that it's all fixable. We just have to do it. Yeah, you do. Uh, here's the thing. I don't think Joe Webb's a long-term answer to anything with this Viking team. At the same time, he's favoring a knee. He's not getting the job done. I don't know why coaches have such a hard time, Ben, putting a, a relief pitcher, so to speak, in for a quarterback who's struggling. And maybe Webb would have given him a spark, at least in the return ponder next week. But they don't, coaches don't think that way. They don't. You know what, Mark? This is the best team game in all the world. And you don't want to disrupt that team. You know, guys are trusting Christian Ponder. His teammates have rallied behind him. I just don't think it's the right. I know, I know how you're feeling. I know how you're feeling, especially as a fan. But 
guys want to stick behind him. And I, and, and I, I know, having played, that you really have to give this guy some time, give him an opportunity. Sometimes guys need to go through the fire before they're going to come out. You know the best. Well, I just equate it with baseball. It doesn't mean you don't you lost faith in your starting pitcher, but maybe right. he's having a bad day, and you bring someone in, maybe he sparks, maybe he doesn't. But it wasn't going anywhere with him in there anyway. That's true. That's true. As you might imagine, there was a lot of ponder bashing on my Twitter account after the game. I narrowed down a lot of the venom towards him and the rest of the squad. Jeff Barthel, Jeff Barthel says, is the, is the no deep threat on the play calls, the wide receivers on Ponder, a combination of everything. They have wide receivers who play in the National Football League. <laughs> you were a tight end with uh, some great Indianapolis Colts wide yeah. receivers. Well, and they brought in Jerome Simpson to, you know, to handle this, but, yeah. but he had one reception today. You know, we need to get guys like him down the field and we need to give him an opportunity to make that to make that play and it's just I don't know I, and again you have to look at the film I don't know he's waving he's either complaining about a, a pass interference but right. I mean we've heard about him at, at, in mini camp and that's been it yeah. uh, Jake Graff at Jake Graff said it looked like Seattle used a similar game plan to Tampa but well, what, what can we do to beat this formula that's beating us things talk about on the defensive side I mean they ran Tampa Bay ran through the Vikings we saw again with Marshawn Lynch one of the best in the game but yet the Viking run defense, which has been so good for so many years, has got a lot of leaks in it right now. Well, and, and you know what? Even Ponder alluded to this, too, that, that they were running the same blitzes that Tampa was running a week before. Well, if they were, then why weren't you prepared for them? I mean, those mm -hmm. are the questions, I think, that they're wanting to go back to their film and figure out this week. They have to. Well, they have to. They get Detroit next week. And our final one, Dave OB33. Joe Flacco and Greg Jennings are free agents next year. <laughs> Do the Vikings go after one of them or both? The trading deadline's come and gone. This is Rick Spielman's team. He's the guy that's calling the shots, especially on the quarterback. He drafted them. Um, they go back even last year when they lost the game at Washington. They had a chance at that point to perhaps draft RG3. But teams, generally speaking, that they heavily invest in free agent quarterbacks. Oh, there's the Engate guy named Brett Favre they invested in, but <laughs> right. that was a little different situation. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, Mark, you know, let's be honest. Two years here. I mm -hmm. mean, are we, are we going to give up on a guy? I'm, I'm going to battle here a little bit because I'm a player's yeah. guy. Two years, are we just going to give up on a guy? who really has, has poured his heart in, into Minnesota and wanting to, he, he gets it, he's honest with us, he knows that he needs to get better, he knows he needs to improve. You know, as a, as a player, as a former player, I'm going to give him that opportunity. Well, you I, know, I, I watched the Dallas Cowboys lose again, and I think they're right. three and five or something. They got, Tony Romo's been dealing with this for I how many it. years, and with a bevy of wide receivers and a, a really much more talented offensive team other than Adrian Peterson and Harvin, I guess you could say. But, but what did Jerry Jones say about about? Tony Romo. He's his that, quarterback. And he's his quarterback. They're going to stick with him and, and they're going to yeah. make him the franchise guy. Well, they're going to live I'm and die. I'm not saying that Ponder is the franchise of the, of no. the Vikings, but. Yeah. Not yet, no. <laughs> Ben's going to stick around and talk a little golfers with us yesterday. You had a fun day yesterday, though the golfers awesome. did, including how the day. defense unfortunately came unglued during some key plays against the Wolverines' backup quarterback, Devin Gardner. Stay with us. Oh, no, look. kids you know I, I think we played hard uh, I don't think there's any question about that uh, but sometimes we played out of control and really the game was pretty simple is that the University of Michigan uh, made some plays to win the game and and we couldn't make a play in, in critical times so you know they made more plays than us and in college football or anything you do uh, that's what it comes down to sometimes yeah, they've done that 37 of the last 40 years going into yesterday's game. The story of the Gophers lost to Michigan yesterday at the bank. Ben, as a former Gopher, uh, you were honored at the game yesterday. I know it was a big deal for you. You got to sing the national anthem. Uh, you faced the, the uh, Michigan Wolverines a couple times, and we were just reminiscing, uh, and not, again, for a minute, very painful Friday night game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get you some tissues here. Yeah, I need it. <laughs> Maroney, Barber, UTEC. You ran up, uh, uh, Esslinger, Satterstrom, you're yep. up and down the field against the Wolverines. They ran 400 yards rushing or something, and you lost the game. It, it, they were the number one uh, rush defense in the country that year. And we ran <laughs> all over them, three touchdowns up going into the last. I think John Navarre, who ran a 5.040, slower than offensive line quarterback. Right. I remember that. Had a throwback trick play that won yeah. the game. We just couldn't believe it. Um, Tough, tough year. Yeah. Well, when we found out that multi-talented quarterback Denard Robinson was not going to play because of an elbow injury, the Gophers had to feel like this just might be the day to steal a little brown jug back from the Wolverines. It's been since 1977 when Minnesota last won it at home. True freshman quarterback Philip Nelson got his team off to a good start after a scoreless first quarter. Ben, it's what you'd like to look for from the young kid. 
10 yard pass to John Ray for the touchdown at TCF Stadium was jumping, 7 0 lead here. Really was. And you know, I was concerned when they took him out uh, of his red shirt against Wisconsin, but he, man, he came out against Purdue and played fantastic and really, really showed a lot of leadership throughout this game, even though we didn't win it and made some great decisions. And, and we know he's got the talent, and I'm excited to see how he progresses. This was the backbreaker. Third and 17, they pressured the receiver turned quarterback, Devin Gardner, had all time throw the ball. But look at this play he made. It really was incredible. What, a, what an incredible athlete. I think surprised everybody, especially on the run. You're throwing, up, yeah, you're throwing backside on your throw, and, and he puts it 45 yards down the field. Yeah, Drew Delio scored a 45-yarder, made it 7-7, but you could just feel the air go out of the stadium here. You really could, and, and you know what? Uh, the Gophers started having a... Uh, not getting the right calls from the refs and well here and was one right here they called the Shabazz for pass interference exactly but, which know. never happened um, this is the kind of stuff that that seems to occur to the Gophers much more frequently than we'd like to see yeah one play later they scored in a two-yard run it was 14-7 the Gophers did not get any closer I guess the one controversial play was the third quarter it was a, a fourth and 16 they're down 14 to 7 they turned on a 37-yard field goal they faked it uh, passing uh, to quarterback Philip Nelson. The problem was they needed 16 yards, not five. Jerry Kill said, we haven't beaten Michigan here in 35 years. Needed to make a play. Uh, I probably wasn't going to determine the outcome at the same time. That was kind of crazy. It was a little crazy, and it really was not a great play, to no, be honest. No. I mean, if you're going to run a fake, though, there's a, there's a number of other ones that you could choose, um, and they should have. Yeah, Gardner kept gaining confidence, threw for 234 yards and two <laughs> touchdowns. He took them on some long drives. 35-13 was the final. Michigan, you know, just for their elevation, they're, they're kind of just having an average year for the Michigan Wolverines. They started out losing right. big to Alabama. It's difficult to, pay, to preach patience to Gopher fans when they've all waited these years to, to make a true impact. Jerry Kill is stacking his classes. He's starting next yeah. year to make a dent. The graduates, very few guys was on, they were on the team yesterday on the field, adding a number of redshirt freshmen, but they have to be good. I think the key thing has been, how do you convince high school kids to come here when football has not been a winning tradition? Well, you do it the same way you got me to stay, and the same way you got Thomas to pay to stay, the same way you got Mary and Barbara to stay, and that's, and that's really to cut to the home. We all got together and we decided, you know what, if, if the best stay Mm -hmm. then we're going to have a chance to bring back the national championships and the, tr the great tradition that the University of Minnesota has. And I just wish that more of our guys would do that, that we would rally behind the state that we grew up in, you know, the state that has given us so much, which is what I did. You can tell I'm passionate about this. Because yeah. I want to bring back that tradition to the University of Minnesota. And I, and I really believe that's what Jerry's trying to do. And he's got a great recruiting class, a young team. So let's see what happens over the next couple of years. Ben, we appreciate you coming down. Good luck in your recording and your acting career. We'll get into that <laughs> Thanks, next Mark. time you're in here. Appreciate it. Good appreciate seeing you tonight, right. always. Thank ben Utech. So the coming Rose and Sports Sunday. The Timberwolves head north of the border to Toronto for their first road trip of the season. We'll show you what happened tonight. Stay with us.